So here is the fatigue management project. Slide to move on. Okay. So what is uh, post-stroke fatigue? There's a, a few definitions and facts there, but uh, very common. So over half the people have to stroke get it and exhaustion and tiredness. And of course that links to um, various poor, poor outcomes. And uh, this can affect you know, lots of lots of different activities and, and certainly different for, for different people. So the first reference there, um, quite old, uh, 2003, um, references two, three and four, more recent sort of 2016, 2017. Um, in red at the bottom there, um, it's interesting, there's, there's no ev evidence or real rigorous evidence to show uh, any fatigue interventions working. And the bottom reference is uh, the British Journal of Occupational Therapy, who are putting together uh, a study. And that's just the methods so far in that reference uh, calling for people to help with that study. Uh, however, saying that, there are some recommendations. Um, for example, in the UK, the Royal College of Physicians uh, gives, as part of their uh, guidelines for stroke, some, some tips and strategies, um, reassurance, support, that, that sort of thing. And uh, the Royal College of Occupational Therapists um, have got a nice uh, leaflet that we've been using in, in some general fatigue and management projects so far. So not stroke related, but all the things that you've been using so far, things like rest, sleep, eating well, and so on. Around the world, there are various other organizations that have put together some management of stroke strategies. And, and these you'll, you'll recognize already from, from your daily work. You know, things like you know, conserving your energy, avoiding boom and bust, and you know, trying to plan things out uh, a little bit more and, and educate people about you know, when they're getting, getting tired and sleeping, that, that sort of thing. And the last uh, point there is, is really you know, how, how, do you, how do you get help? which is really where this PowerPoint is, is going. So how could you run a group? You could run uh, an online Zoom meeting. There's you know, one of the most simple formats. Uh, this is great for, for people, especially people with, with fatigue. Um, so they, they just need to log on, don't have to travel for an hour on a bus. Uh, in the current uh, restrictions, this would, this would comply with COVID-19. And there are studies that show that, you know, having your, your face without a mask on is a lot better when communicating, especially you know, for people who can't hear high frequencies and so on. Uh, these courses are fairly easy to administer. For example, uh, the Stroke Association moving forward after stroke. Um, you can have you know, new members dipping in and out and it's easy to organize. Free access to Zoom currently, fairly easy. Even I can use it. And uh, for, for a meeting like this, you don't need a high level of security, you know, the usual NHS security, because um, it's just, just a, a support group. How you would recruit service users or, or patients um, just from the usual stroke team discharges or maybe from the stroke association. So is this going to work? Well, we don't know. Um, however, um, you could use something like the fatigue severity scale, uh, pre-course and post-course. Sorry, my ugly mug is over some of the, some of the writing there. Um, benefits of using this, this scale. Um, it's been researched quite, quite well and um, been shown to be uh, relevant to, to fatigue quite, quite well. And so you can, you can read, read the paper that, that shows uh, how well it works. 
um, from our point of view, it's uh, pretty pretty easy to use and uh, free to use. Uh, you can set up things like Google Forms pretty easily. So uh, service users can can do this at home. So they can they can get the link to this get the link to this form, fill in their details, and answer the form with the severity scale ratings. And you can you can quite easily set these Google Forms up or MailChimp or anything like that. Submit these, and then whoever's running the group can get an idea of how people are feeling before they even start. Another benefit of using this is that this is kind of anonymous, so they're not telling the whole group how fatigued they are to start with before they before they know them. Uh, you get a nice score, so for for pre and post, uh, which is which is nice. So sessions, you know, totally flexible. I've suggested eight sessions, which covers most of the content that we want to see, and also it gives time to to see progress and you know, allow people to to really feel like they can they can open up after a while and, and chat and friendly faces. I've suggested half an hour, um, but you know, again, totally flexible. And uh, I've, I've put in kind of 10 minutes chat time afterwards or yeah. anyone has an additional question, things like that. But again, totally flexible with time. Housekeeping. So as with, with most service user groups, you, you ask people to, um, not talk about the group and mention names outside the group. Um, it's it's good uh, for for people just to maybe just use their first names rather than rather than full names. And uh, please be nice to each other and and follow usual online etiquette. We've broken down the weeks, and these can be delivered. Um, they could all be delivered by an occupational therapist or you could bring in uh, guest star speakers from uh, lots of other areas within a uh, stroke team. I've suggested a sort of generic session plan with some sort of a starter activity until I was a, a teacher a little while ago. Then you, you hit them with the, the content, but not too much. And then you know, various activities and discussion to um, iron in the iron in the theory, and then uh, every good teacher will will set some set some homework. So there's a weekly task to do, and then, as I said before, the, a little bit of extra chat for those that people want to stay on. I've got slight difficulties or on the the homework explaining. So session one. Hello everybody. Um, housekeeping. Please be nice to each other. And we'll assume that a lot of a lot of people don't know much about fatigue, so we're we're going to explain that and all the common things that they might have heard of, or they might have Googled or YouTubed, brain fog, stop start. What's what's all this about? So go through the basic concepts of, of fatigue, and then you know how does a fatigue affect them? Tends to chat about that, chat about their scores. So just really get the, the baseline for where they're going with this course and how they feel. Uh, this week's task is to keep a fatigue diary. Uh, the Multiple Sclerosis Society do a fatigue diary, or you could, you could design your own. Let's see if this is going to come up. And in here... I think it might be right down at the bottom. Yeah, so making making a diary so you can you can have a have a look at that, or you can just do a simple grid. You know, keeping keeping times of the day, or even just morning, lunchtime, evening, and then they tell you what they've done and just give a scale of one to ten how how they're feeling during the day. Then they can give themselves an idea of. You know, is it the mornings? Is it the afternoons? Is it the evenings? 
what you know what what type of thing makes them tired so they there's a blank one and they can just start filling that in so this is session two the next week and just you know start off with some silly activity uh, draw draw a sketch to show the effect of fatigue for them this week uh, just a quick recap of the theory from last week have a look at those diaries that they've made and discuss those and that, and that might take quite a lot of time when they're chatting about what what they found and this is a really good time for them to open up and they've discovered something about about their their fatigue then time for a bit more theory um the fatigue fighting uh sorry, fighting fatigue book is quite good with lots of activities and, and theory in so I would recommend you read that. It's in the, the cupboard here in Oldham if, uh, if you're based here. And then think about you know, energy as the, the, main, the main theme. And you know, things, you know, strat introduce strategies like you know, the three Ps, priority plan, pacing, grading activities, you know, sitting down rather than standing up to do the, to do the task. Homework for this week, uh, complete an energy diary um, for example the one uh, in the fighting fatigue book so go and have a look at that um, in the next week uh, session three rest relaxation and sleep um, starter everyone can can say one thing that really drains them and one thing that recharges them might be watching tv drains them whereas somebody else that might be watching tv makes them feel feel better look at the energy diaries from last week and discuss those again that that might take quite a long time and then find out how what what do people do to rest and kind of recharge their their batteries um they could test themselves uh, where um, I would say certain questions and then then people give their thumbs up, thumbs middle, thumbs down as to to where, whether that you know helps them rest or not. Relaxation techniques, for example, you can find these all over all over the internet and various charities, but here's a particularly good one on mindfulness uh, from from mind and lots of lots of things. Lots of things you could do there. So talk about sleep, sleep hygiene. <clears throat> and homework for this week. Um, try and you know try a few of these activities and, and see if any of them are particularly good for them. Session four, activity, exercise, and fun. So starter, throw back to last week. What were your tips what did you try what worked what didn't work have we got a big tip and then we're into today's theory and um, you know activity and exercise um but particularly focusing on you know avoiding the kind of really going for it and then zonking out for the rest of the day so avoiding that boom bust again there's a nice chapter in the fighting fatigue book Um, the moving forward after stroke program did include, I think it was uh, Jason from Aldham Active, and um, doing some doing some exercises on the My Stroke Guide. There's some example videos of activities you could do as well, and lots of exercises. And again, uh, Stroke Association got lots of lots of stuff. For example, their leaflet. Um, gives gives some of their exercises. So this week's homework, hopefully more fun. Find find a, a good exercise that's sustainable and fun, and they, they feel like could you know get them going. Session five: eating and drinking. So throw back to last week. What were your favourite exercises? And you, you might even be able to put a little program together from everyone's tips. Because with exercise, it's got to be something you enjoy enjoy doing. Or else you'll just just give up. Favorite foods, 
this will get everyone chatting. Favorite foods and drinks, everyone's got them. Things they love, things they hate. How well do what they tell you match up with things like the, the government eat well plate? So you can have a look at that. Uh, are they, they taking a nice balanced diet? Is it too fatty? You know, too much of one type of thing. So you could discuss that. They might remember that from, from school. You could introduce resources such as uh, Stroke Association stuff on healthy eating and how, how this affects further strokes and uh, um, you know, reducing the risk of those. Homework this week, top of the swaps. What could you swap out to make your diet healthier? What could you, could you, a chocolate bar for a stick of celery? I don't know. Session six, memory and concentration. Throwback to last week. Did they, did they manage to swap anything out for anything healthier? Did they do uh, salt for low salt? And then, linking with the title of this week, Ask people just to remember what other people have just said and see if they can. Can can people give a list of everybody else's swaps that they mentioned as a nice introduction to memory and concentration? You could start doing a bit of theory, like out of the Fighting Fatigue book, but, you know, bring in some uh, annoying background music or get someone having an argument in the background or something and then ask people, did they, did they find it hard to you know, concentrate whilst, you know, whilst the dog is jumping on you or something. Then an activity, you know, ask people, you know, when they want to concentrate, what do they do? You know, how, how do they feel? What, what makes them concentrate more or less? So good discussion there. And then come, come up with some strategies. You know, people might come up with these already. You know, things like, you know, chunking up activities. Yeah, making sure you're doing them in the in the right place and time, right time of day. Distractions, and yeah, you know, things like writing things down, diaries, calendars. Homework for this week: uh, try a tip for memory and concentration, and and come back. So they might you know buy a pack of post its and see if that helps them remember things that they they want to during the week. Session seven. So we're, we're getting, you know, hopefully people know, know each other quite well by this point. And they can really kind of chat to each other. So throw back to last week to start with, you know, your tips for memory and concentration. Did, did any work? Did any not work? Did it make people feel better? You know, less stressed about remembering things. Second starter, um, has anyone had any self-critical thoughts? Yeah, so, so some people might really open up here. Yeah, you might need to uh, manage that. Um, but people will have bad thoughts. You know, they've just had a had a stroke, and they say it's a you know big change. And so, try to encourage you know you know one you know, methods to to deal with this, such as you know thinking about evidence of against your bad thoughts so if if you had a bad thought saying you know oh, i slept in this morning you know and then they didn't make anyone any breakfast well you could counter that thought with well that's going to give you energy to make everyone a nice lunch you know so try and think of a, an evidence against your bad thought a bit of theory dealing with emotions and changes to behavior and effective others. So something like the emotions videos from the stroke guide. You could uh, maybe watch one of those and, and discuss that. Uh, various websites have got, got information linked to emotions. So for example, I pulled one up from Help for Heroes. Um, they deal with quite, quite a lot of emotional stuff. And it's not just for soldiers coming back from battlefields and post-traumatic stress but they've they've got quite a lot of quite a lot of good good stuff there 
this week's homework, you know, how have you counted a negative thought? So try and report back next week with, with one of those, you know, or, or an example of a way that you, you helped another person to help you. So did you let them help you? Did you chat to them and discuss something? So that, that might come up with all sorts of revealing discussions. And the last session, moving forward. So where do we go from, from here? Um, throw back to last week first. You know, how have you counted your negative thoughts? And you know, how did how did you chat to someone or let them let them help you? Uh, review the sessions. So think about you know all the little little things that you've done. Um, talk about setbacks. So you will have setbacks, but has anyone got any tips and ways to help you deal with with setbacks and and try and remain positive? Then overall, you know, we've had eight weeks now. You know, what what what's worked for people? What hasn't worked for people? Is it, people change their diet? Are people doing exercise? Are people doing nothing? What what's you know what's gone on for people? What are you going to do carrying carrying on with you know going forwards for the for the rest of your life? Are you going to make any changes that are going to help reduce the risk of further strokes or increase your health? Then. Um, weekly task is to do the severity scale again, fatigue severity scale. And, and has there been any change? Can we show that this, these eight weeks have, have been productive in terms of that? Obviously, uh, in terms of research, it's, it's a not a very good number of participants or blinding and, and so on, but it'll give you a little, a little bit of a, a little bit of an ind indication. And resources, um, lots and lots of stuff out there, but yeah, the Stroke Association is, is possibly the first, first place that people might, might go to. The My Stroke Guide um, forum is, is quite good. The, you, need, you get a login and username, you can, can be anonymous, and uh, lots of people having chats about various topics on there. Whilst running your course, uh, you will of course have to think about uh, policies and governance. Um, for example, you know the Royal College of Occupational Therapists has has their professional standards. HCPC have got their standards, so you'd be looking to keep to all of their kind of ethics standards and anything uh, you know from, from the from the trust. You know things like you know confidentiality. Right, that's it. Um, if you have any questions, uh, send them on a postcard. Um, and uh, lots of references, lots of stuff to, to go and look at to see if we've been uh, making any sense. Hope to see some of you soon.